good morning or good afternoon to everyone. I am Mark from Eurisys, and uh, today we are going to talk about CoExpress, more particularly uh, the latest version of CoExpress, CoExpress 2.0, and then going towards CoExpress over fiber. A word about Eurisys to start. Uh, Eurisys is a company from Europe, from Belgium, incorporated in 1989, so we are exactly 31 year old. Now, uh, we have about 70 employees all over the world. We have a subsidiary in Germany. We have sales offices in uh, California, in Shanghai, in Tokyo, and then in, in Singapore. We are probably well, most well known for our frame grabbers, but we also sell uh, IP cores uh, compatible with the USB TreeVision, GigiVision, Camera Link, and uh, CoExpress. We also sell a set of uh, machine vision software tools and uh, video servers for dedicated video streaming applications. As I said today, we talk about CoExpress. Uh, what is CoExpress? We like to say uh, CoExpress is the world's leading standard for high-speed imaging. Of course, not everyone agrees, but this is our point of view. And at Eurisys, we are happy, very, very happy to to have introduced CoExpress product uh, more than five years ago. Now, today, uh, CoExpress represents more than 50% uh, of our frame grabber sales. So we now sell, uh, for more than one year actually, more CoExpress frame grabbers than uh, Camera Link frame grabber, which was uh, number one. We are also happy that CoExpress brought us a, a lot of new applications. Our number one application is still machine vision. We sell a lot. Uh, of uh, in, uh, CoExpress into inspection uh, of semiconductor and electronic components, but we also have a lot of applications in the medical imaging field and life sciences for broadcast and more, more, more exactly for, for video recording applications, uh, especially for multiple cameras and, and for defense applications. With CoExpress, we are able to acquire images from the fastest and the highest resolution cameras with a single link carrying up to 12 gigabit per second. So that's the, the CXP12 speed, which was introduced with our CoExpress 2.0. A single cable for simultaneous communication and control of the camera and power supply of the camera. Uh, a big advantage of CoExpress is that we can easily combine multiple cables into a uh, single connection, meaning that uh, we, can, uh, we have a very flexible way to increase the bandwidth, and that's probably why CoExpress is very popular for high bandwidth applications. CoExpress is a global standard. It is hosted by the GIA the Japan Industrial Imaging Association, but as the GIA is part of the global uh, G3 standard, the global alliance, which uh, also group the EMVA and DAIA, everyone can uh, use the, the CoExpress uh, standard and uh, develop products uh, for free. So that's why with CoExpress, we enjoy a, a really broad market adoption. There are more than 50 companies supplying CoExpress products today. This includes cameras, frame grabbers, accessories like extenders, repeaters, and cables. So we really have a, a broad ecosystem of products, devices compatible with uh, CoExpress. This is Eurisys' uh, range of CoExpress frame grabbers. I'm not going to deep uh, uh, to dive deep into this uh, this table now. My, my point today is not to talk about our products. I just want to mention that the most successful uh, in terms of sales of our CoExpress card is the CoExlink Quad G3. CoExlink is the name of the, our series of CoExpress frame grabbers. The CoExlink Quad G3 has a four CXP6 connection for a total of 25 gigabit per second. And the number two product is the eight times CXP6 frame grabber, the CoExlink Octo. And this is really the proof, a proof that uh, CoExpress is successful and useful and successful for high bandwidth applications. High bandwidth may mean high resolution, 
uh, high frame rate or a combination of both, of course, can also mean a combination of uh, multiple cameras because with the correct link octo, we have, cam we have applications where we connect up to eight cameras to a single card. The, the fastest rising product, I mean, this year is the Quartzing Quad CXP12. It's a Core Express 2.0 frame grabber with a speed of 12 gigabit per second per cable, per link. Uh, take a look at this frame grabber. Now I will come back to it later. So you can see here that we have a four HD BNC connector. It was actually already introduced uh, to the market two years ago. And at that time, at Eurysys and sensor to image we started to think, where do we go from here? We have reached the CXP12 speed. We started to wonder, uh, what, what's the next step? What are we going to do after uh, CXP12? With uh, the Quartzlink Octo and eight connections, we have eight times six 0.25 gigabit per second total, 50 gigabit per second uh, raw bandwidth, 40 gigabit per second net bandwidth. With the Chrysling Quad CXP12, we have exactly the same bandwidth. Then our customers tell us, the camera makers tell us, the sensor manufacturers show us that there is a constant need for more bandwidth uh, in this market as CoExpress is serving the high-end side of the market. And at the time, we, we quickly got convinced that going further will require transmission over fiber optics. And we tried to find a way to move Coaxpress towards fiber optics transmission. Our team at sensor to image so our subsidiary in Germany, has designed a way to run the Coaxpress protocol as it is, unmodified, over a standard Ethernet connection. Ethernet is the Ethernet from the network, networking standard. This is really a true innovation because they are completely different protocols. We like Coaxpress Co for its features, the fact that we can use multiple links with a single frame grabber or a single camera, low latency, low jitter communication, and of course the bandwidth. We want to keep the Coexpress protocol, but we are looking for a way to have access to a lower cost and easier to find physical layer. This is exactly what moving towards Ethernet connection will provide us. At Eurysys, we propose a new standard called Coexpress over fiber. Coexpress over fiber uses standard electronic connectors and cables designed for Ethernet. But the protocol is Coexpress, not Ethernet, so not GigiVision. This means before you ask that Ethernet routers and switches will not work with Coexpress over fiber. We, we don't want it. We want to keep a simple point-to-point point, point point connection. By moving towards Ethernet, we will benefit from the low-cost standard Ethernet equipment, connectors, and cables. And Ethernet is defined by a strong IEEE standard. Coexpress is also defined by a GIA standard. So this means that Coexpress over fiber is based on two very, very powerful standards. By moving towards Ethernet equipment, we will also benefit from the free evolution of Ethernet towards higher bandwidth. Today, 100G is here, 200G is here, and 400G is coming in the Ethernet world. 100G in, in Ethernet parlance means uh, 100 gigabit per second. It's mostly uh, made of four links at 25 gigabit per second. 400G is uh, four links at uh, uh, 100 gigabit per second. Put into a chart, this is uh, what, what uh, the, the speed evolution looks like. Today, with the copper communication on the left, for coaxial cable at CXP6 speed, we have a 25 gigabit per second road speed. For coaxial cable at 12.5 gigabit per second speed, we have 50 gigabit per second row speed and uh, 40 gigabit per second uh, row bandwidth. Moving into fiber on the right, 
with a 40G transceiver today will have exactly the same bandwidth as a four connection at CXP12. Moving into faster transceiver, QSP28 and QSP56 will have access to 100 gigabit per second and 200 gigabit per second communication with very, very little uh, additional investment. As you have understood, uh, we are moving into fiber with co-express over fiber, and we are very happy to use fiber optics. Fiber optics are really better than copper cable. With fibers, we have access to virtually unlimited bandwidth, unlimited distance, complete immunity to electrical noise, which would be super useful in a factory automation environment. Uh, fiber optics make less bulky, lighter cables and allow us to reduce the power consumption. There's no such thing as power over fiber though. So we are used to POCL, POE, POCXP. There's no power over fiber. So we'll have to run a separate cable to supply power to the camera, or uh, I would say more likely, we will have to supply power to the camera locally. We have developed a product to prove this concept, and we are introducing uh, the Coaxlink QSFP Plus, which is available as a pre-series now, as you receive. The Coaxlink QSFP Plus is the four connection coaxpress over fiber frame rubber. Remember the photo of the Coax Link Quad CXP12 before. This card is exactly the same, except that we have replaced the four HDBNC connectors by a QSFP plus cage. Why QSFP plus? It's our choice. That's not the only option possible. QSFP plus means a quad SFP plus. It's four times SFP plus. What does SFP mean? Actually, more SFP module. An SFP module is a small form factor pluggable module. It's a kind of compact network interface module, which is widely used in data center. So here we see the, the module, sorry, the slot, which is called the cage. It's empty here, but actually in this QSFP plus slot, we insert a transceiver. And on the left here, you have an optical transceiver an optical QSFP plus transceiver. On the right side of the transceiver, there's the electrical connection going to the card. On the left side, we have the optical connection going to the fiber. And because we use these modules, we can use different types of optical transceiver. I'm going to show you two examples here. The first one uh, for a maximum of 150 meter fiber cable, which will be super useful for machine vision application. It uses uh, an MTP MPO fiber connector. So you see the connector in the middle, the whole cable, the whole fiber cable without the transceiver on the right. This kind of transceiver is super easy to find. You just Google it, 40 G base SR4 uh, QSFP plus transceiver. You will find a, a lot of examples and really, really affordable cost. This is the option uh, for machine vision application. And with 140, sorry, 150 meter fiber cable will have a more, more than enough uh, cable length. Another option here, using an LC duplex fiber connector for a maximum of a 40 kilometer cable. It's another transceiver, which is a little bit more, more expensive, but will, be able, will allow us to serve this kind of application, which is more like an image transmission. I will end this presentation by telling you more about uh, our effort at standardization. I think that standardization is super important. There are already a few existing solutions using uh, fiber optics for machine vision. Proprietary products like the, like the Microton fiber camera here, which works very, very well, uh, but, but you need to, to buy uh, exactly the, 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 the equipment from that manufacturer. Other more general interfaces like Hotaru and OptiLink, you might not have heard about this because these are interfaces that I use most, uh, mostly in Japan. And of course, CameraLink HS, which is a very popular interface uh, using uh, fiber uh, for uh, a few years now. However, none of these 
uh, interfaces is really has reached an international standard and is really popular. We need to trigger much wider adoption. I told you about 50 manufacturers making cables, uh, accessories, devices, cameras, frame grabbers compatible with Coexpress. We want to ride on that wave. We, we think that Coexpress is the most popular standard for high-end applications today, and we want to, to continue with Coexpress over fiber. Bringing wider adoption will also bring the interface cost down. So as early as at the very beginning of the process, two years ago, we have talked to the GIA, which is the Coexpress Standard Hosting Organization, and uh, we have submitted, as you received, we have drafted and submitted uh, the Coexpress over fiber specification uh, in, in May this year. Today, the Coexpress work group is working on this specification. Actually, last week there was an IVSM meeting and uh, we have reached the release candidate number one of uh, the Coexpress over fiber uh, guidelines. Uh, I think that at the beginning of 2021, this will become an international standard and the Coexpress over fiber guideline will be published as an add-on to the Coexpress standard. There's also another document, the optical interface guideline for Coexpress, which details the kind of connectors that can be used to run uh, Coexpress over fiber. As you receive with our subsidiary sensor to image, we also provide IP calls that allow camera makers and frame grabber manufacturers to make, to, to, devi uh, to design uh, Coexpress over fiber cameras and uh, frame grabbers. As you can see in this block diagram, uh, we provide a Coexpress over fiber bridge IP core, which maps the signal coming from the CXP device into X XGMI. Uh, signals, which are then sent to the, the Ethernet's lowest level IP core uh, inside the FPGA, which are uh, completely standard IP cores provided by the FPGA manufacturers. But uh, we, you can contact us if you are interested in this product, but I repeat that uh, CoExpress is, is an open standard and uh, any company is uh, able to design CoExpress over fiber products. We think that Coexpress is successful because of its unique combination of high bandwidth, low latency, including the trigger latency and high stability and reliability. We think that Coexpress over fiber is Coexpress and will keep the same advantages. We really believe that Coexpress over fiber is the future of Coexpress. Today, we are able to provide prototypes of the Coaxlink USFP Plus for anyone who is interested in developing a camera, for example, compatible with this standard. We also provide the Coexpress over fiber bridge IP core for camera makers. There are three camera makers, well-known international camera makers who have started developing cameras compatible with the Coexpress over fiber standard. The Coaxing QSFP Plus will be available uh, in uh, Q1 2021. And uh, we believe that in next year, a uh, few companies are going to launch a Coexpress over fiber cameras on the market. Next steps will be to go from QSFP Plus to QSFP 28 and then QSFP 56 for added bandwidth uh, with the Coexpress over standard specification. Mark, two minutes Thank left. You. Ah, I'm done. Perfect. Thank you very much. <laughs> perfect. Thank you, Peter. <laughs> Yes. Perfect. So now it's a time for questions. Please use the Q&A section for your questions. And there are still some questions. Just one moment. Uh, what is the band width of the monitor and control interface? Uh, okay, that, that's a very good question. Actually, we have uh, with CXP6, we have uh, 23 megabits per second. We, with CXP12, we increased to 46 uh, megabits per second, so that allows us to uh, control much faster camera. Uh, with Coexpress over fiber, we, we, we have a much higher bandwidth, actually, because we have uh, as many fibers going to the camera 
uh, as uh, coming from the camera. So we have the full bandwidth of uh, uh, up to currently one fiber, so 10 gigabit per second for control of the camera. Mm -hmm. Another question, is there a robot quality fiber cable available, meaning 15 yes. million or more bending and flexing? Yes, yes, and it's a very good question. I didn't have time to address this during this presentation, but uh, several uh, manufacturers within the GI are working on uh, connectors with, that can be screwed on robust connectors. And uh, I talked to a cable made, uh, maker from non just uh, three weeks ago, and they are validating uh, robotic grade uh, cables, uh, fiber cables. Thanks. Uh... There's another question from Matthew. Uh, what are, are the additional requirements for QSFP for industrial applications, high flex, ruggedized, locking? Yes, I, I talked about all three. Actually, uh, the, the QSFP um, transceivers themselves are locked inside the cage and the MPP, MPO uh, fiber is also locked to the, to the, um, uh, to the transceiver. Uh, there, there are manufacturers, manufacturers part of the COBO, COBO organization that make different types of locking mechanisms for the fibers also. Uh, it is the beginning, but uh, we, we are working on, on uh, solutions for, for the recognized connector. Thanks, Mark. Uh, looking at the clock, I think we will start now with the next presentations. If you have any more questions to Mark and his products, uh, there will be another Q&A section after the third presentation. So stay tuned or just send me your questions now and I will answer and Mark will answer them at the end. So there's an old question to, uh, for Mark. Are there more than one Phi supplier or is it still a single source supply? Oh, yes, definitely. I mean, first for, for Coexpress over Copper, I would like to clarify that there are two suppliers, uh, Microchip and Maycom. So, so it's an old myth that Coexpress is a single supplier solution, that that's not true anymore for a few years now. But when it comes to Coexpress over Fiber, I mean, the, 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 it's the same as Ethernet. So, so we are opening up the market and, uh, and there are literally dozens of Supplier for Ethernet Phi today. Yeah, and then and Mark, where are your markets? Also Asia. Um, yes, one market. I mean, for us, about uh, seventy percent of our sales are in Asia. <laughs> but I would like to 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 share the command here of, of Manuel because uh, recently, and especially with Coexpress, we have had applications in um, uh, life science uh, genome. Uh, decoding and, and applications in AR and VR, virtual reality, uh, augmented reality that uh, need a lot of bandwidth, a lot of cameras, and, and uh, most of them are in, in, in America and some of them in Europe also. So it's not only Asia for high bandwidth.